Yeah, this gentleman that I'm about to introduce to you is a relatively new simulator that we've um, just purchased at Huddersfield and he's called Sinman 3G. Now just before I talk a little bit about him, it's just important to understand that simulation is not just about mannequins. It uses many different strategies but within the School of Health Sciences here we're lucky enough that we've got many different types of, of these mannequins that, that basically replicate real human beings and they come in different levels of technology and we refer to that as fidelity. There's low fidelity, medium fidelity and high fidelity. And this gentleman here is high fidelity, which what that means is he's completely computer programmed. So we can get this um, patient to replicate any particular physiological property that occurs in any healthcare setting. He can run with that program and students have to react with this mannequin and depending on how they interact will depend on whether he gets worse or whether he starts to get better. Just to explain a few things about him, you can see that he is actually blinking and he does actually have real pupil reactions so if we shine a light in his eyes his pupils will constrict and we can change those settings so they can be abnormal or normal. He has pulses in exactly the same places as you would expect a pulse to be found on a real human. He has pulses in his in his wrist, he has them in his feet, um, with his pedal pulses here, he has pulses in his neck, his chest is moving, we have both sides of the chest moving and we can also listen for breath sounds. He can pass urine, he can bleed, he can sweat, he can cry, he can talk. There's many things that this gentleman can do and we can control him by the use of a, a computer here. The other thing that's important just to mention is this is the type of monitor that you would find in a, in a hospital setting and we have heart rhythm, we have oxygen saturations, we have blood pressure etc and we use a touch screen approach just like we would in a hospital setting so now I'm just getting it to take the blood pressure. Now in terms of abnormalities we could set up a program whereby this gentleman for example has got a bleed inside and as that bleed develops just in a real patient, his um, characteristics would change. He would start to breathe more shallow, more quickly. His oxygen saturations would drop. His blood pressure would drop. His pulse would become weak. It would start to race. It would get quicker. The student should be able to interact with this mannequin and identify those physiological changes. If they react appropriately, so for instance, if they gave oxygen, he may improve. If they didn't give enough oxygen or they didn't give it by the right device, he may start to deteriorate. If he continues to deteriorate because the management isn't appropriate, he may eventually stop breathing. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate to you now. I'm going to actually stop him breathing and we'll show you what would happen in that situation. So on our, on our monitor now, um, what we actually find here is that his heart rhythm has completely changed and he's in a life-threatening rhythm. Alarms are starting to sound, he's got no blood pressure, he's got no pulse and if we actually look his eyes are shut and he's stopped breathing. So Andrew is laying the patient flat because what he's wanting to do is now assess the airway. So he's looking, he's listening, he's feeling, he's feeling for a pulse, he's trying to listen for any breath sounds and he's doing that for 10 seconds. If there is no breath sounds he's going to start cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Now actually on this monitor, it's also showing us how effective he is in this technique. And if the student is not effective, we can actually play that back to say you weren't doing it quick enough, you weren't doing it strong enough, or you were actually placing your hands in the wrong place. So it's a really good example of, of trying to do this in a safe environment. Okay, so the next thing that Andrew is going to just demonstrate is show you a little bit about how we might manage his airway. And again, all this equipment is exactly the same as we would expect to find in a healthcare setting. So at the moment, he's using a laryngoscope, and this identifies the vocal cords and the larynx, and he's passing the endotracheal tube between the vocal cords, down the larynx, into the trachea. He's now just inflating a cuff, which creates a seal. And when we actually attach a bag valve mask, we can see that the chest is now being inflated. And this is exactly what we would want to achieve in clinical practice. So students are able to do this, they can do repeated practice. They have the guidance of instructors 
who have basically got extensive experience in these techniques so that we make sure they're doing it right. And we can also support this with videos, etc., so that the students can keep practicing. They can use the videos as a demonstration to make sure they're doing this right. And we can also record what the students do. And that's a very informative way of the students looking back at their practice to see exactly how they've done it. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.